Yo, what is up world? We are back and the next couple of videos are going to be exciting. So I'm back here adding to the Swift concurrency playlist. I've not added to this playlist since I originally made it. And I'm honored that many of you have used this playlist to actually learn Swift concurrency, how to use async await. The more code that I write recently, the more and more I'm shifting everything into async await. It is just so much easier to use and is absolutely the future of asynchronous code in Swift. Well, you guys don't need me to tell you that. If you're watching this playlist, you probably already know that. And so the first thing that I want to cover in this video actually came up a couple of times in our Discord. And so for those of you who are not yet joined, I highly recommend joining our Discord. It is free. There's almost, I think, 2,000 people in it right now. It is just a bunch of like Swift and Swift UI developers. And everybody's in there like asking and answering each other's questions and just having casual conversations with other Swift developers. So if you are feeling bored or anything like that, join the Discord. It's free. Why not? But one of the conversations that we had in there was actually around references in Swift concurrency. You probably noticed in this playlist that I never used weak self or strong self. And that's because in Swift concurrency, we don't really have to manage those references ourselves. But even though we don't have to write out that code ourselves, that doesn't mean that there is no strong or weak references happening in the code. And so in this video, I wanna just literally dive into what are the references that are happening and why or why do we not need to manage them ourselves? So I hope this clears some things up for some people. I know the first time I learned Swift concurrency, I was confused about this. So there's got to be at least somebody out there that's thinking the same thing. So with that said, let's dive into the code and let me know in the comments if this actually cleared anything up for you. All right, welcome back everyone. I am back here in the Swift Concurrency Bootcamp. I have not appended to this playlist since I made the original like 12 videos, but I have a couple things that I want to touch on. The first two videos here, I think are just core to how to actually work with async await in maybe like an MVVM app. And then I have a couple kind of related components that we're going to get into that are not technically required for Swift concurrency but we use Swift concurrency code when implementing them in Swift UI, at least most of the time. And so I'll jump into some of those as well. This first video though comes because this topic has come up a couple times now in our Discord. So those of you who do not know, we have a Discord, Swiftful Thinking Discord. I will link it below. It is also linked on the website. If you go to swiftful-thinking.com, there's a nice big button to join the Discord. We have about 1,500 people in the Discord, and it is active on a daily basis. People are posting questions, answering questions, tons of Swift and Swift-related conversation there. Definitely join if you want. It's free to join, so why not? But anyway, something that came up in that is what we're going to cover right now. And the question is basically, why do we not have to use... Or should we use weak self and strong self? How do we manage those references when using async await? Now, I purposely basically have not used it in this bootcamp because we don't need to do it anymore. But I do want to explain to you where our references are and why we basically don't need to manage them. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file and a Swift UI view, of course. Let's call this one, let's call this one strong self bootcamp and let's click create maybe i should call it references bootcamp but anyway i'm going to create a class here let's do a final class and call it strong self bootcamp view model conform to observable object open the brackets and we're going to initialize one from our view at state objects private var view model set it equal to a strong self bootcamp view model all right, so firstly in here, let's create an at published var, call it maybe data. We'll just make it a string and we'll just make a blank string for now, or we'll just put maybe some title and we'll just put that on the screen. This will be view model dot data. All right, super simple. We're going to now go through a couple functions that basically do the exact same thing. And we're going to talk about the references that are 
either explicit or implied in these functions. So firstly, I'm gonna do some sort of, let's say, func, let's call it update data. And let's just simulate some sort of manager class here. So I'm just gonna do another final class and say strong self data service, open the brackets, and we're just gonna say func get data, okay? Get data will be an asynchronous function that returns a string. And in here, we'll just return updated data. All right. So in here, let's get a reference to our manager and we'll set it equal to strong self data service. Or I could have called it data service, I guess, data service. And in update data, we're going to add a task. And then we're going to say data equals data service dot get data. Of course, it's asynchronous, so we need to await. On a peer, we're going to call viewmodel.updateData. Okay, obviously it worked, right? Super simple function here. You all should know what is happening if you followed this playlist. But a lot of people have asked me, why don't we have to call self.data here? Is there a reference here? Is it strong? Is it weak? Why are we not managing that at all? And so this function here is actually implying a strong reference. So data is within this class here. And obviously this is asynchronous code. So we don't know how long this function of get data is going to take. It could, could be immediate, it could be five minutes. We're gonna await for however long it takes for the data to come back. And during that time, there's a chance that this view model gets deallocated, right? And so what we are doing here is we have a strong reference to the view model saying, saying that the view model cannot deallocate until this function completes. So I'm going to put a quick comment here that this implies a strong reference. Okay, so I didn't have to call self, but it is implied. So I'm going to copy this and make another function here. I'm going to call this update data two. And this time I'm going to call self dot data equals await data service dot get data. Okay, so this is actually the exact same function as update data. Both of these are the exact same. Putting the word self here is maybe just for our own purposes. The only reason you really would put self here is if maybe you passed in some sort of data as well, and you wanted to make sure that you were referencing the self.data, meaning this one, and not data, which is then this one. But that's obviously like a kind of a rare case. So we're gonna keep this as self.data. I'm gonna create one more function down here, update data three. And again, this is a strong reference. And another way to write a strong reference manually would be referencing self in this closure. So now this is a strong reference to self, which is the view model inside this closure. So the in meaning in this closure, referencing self as a strong reference. So this one, is a strong reference and this one also is a strong reference. So all three of these functions are the exact same. Now you might be thinking if we have self here we can obviously do weak self. So I could do another function here update data four and we can do a weak self. Now this is a weak reference and this would work if we really want to manually manage these references and make it weak like we used to we can do this here. But the reason that we don't do this, and look at this, this is actually even telling us there's also a reference, data service is also inside self. So there's also a strong reference here and here and here. So this I guess would be the same as self and self here. And so then here I can make a weak reference to self and we will say self.data. And I guess this actually becomes optional because if self is nil, then it returns it optional. So we could say, if let data equals that, self.data equals data, okay? So now we have a weak reference inside this task, and this code definitely works. So the question is like, okay, so we have these references, now that we know that we have them, why are we not using these in our code? Well, the answer is that all of these references now are actually inside tasks. So instead of managing the reference at the reference level, we can manage this function, this whole closure at the task level. 
So if we are concerned about like the view model being deallocated, then we can cancel all of our tasks. And when we cancel a task, it will cancel all of the functions inside the task. So I'm gonna copy this and create another function here. Let's call this update data five. And here we're gonna say, we don't need to manage weak strong because we can manage the task. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And now let's just say when this view disappears, we'll say on disappear, maybe we want to cancel all outstanding tasks. So if this function was like still going, we want the ability to cancel it. So up here I could say maybe private var some task and let's make it of type. And it looks like this task does not throw errors. So we're just going to say a task with a success of void and a failure of never. And we'll make it optional, set it equal to nil. And then we will set some task equal to this whole task here. Okay, so, so now when the view disappears, we're gonna run some function like up here, let's create a function called cancel tasks. And we're gonna call some task dot cancel. We could also call some task and set it equal to nil. So when we cancel the task, it's going to remove all of the references inside of it. So now I can call view model dot cancel tasks. And so doing something like this means that we don't then need to do all of these references here. If for some reason you're running a task that you do want to keep that strong reference to, so maybe you don't want to cancel the task, then we can just keep it like this because then we're never going to cancel it. This task will complete when the await finishes. So there definitely is a use case to not cancel your tasks. I would say most of the time, if you're just awaiting a specific result, I personally have not been canceling the tasks, but if we are subscribing to like a publisher, so for example, in the previous video, I did an async publisher bootcamp. These four await values are never going to finish, right? They're always going to stay around. So really we should be canceling all of these tasks if we're subscribed to them. And so just to show you guys one other way to do this, if I copy and paste this here, six, we can also create some sort of array. We'll say my tasks, make it an array of this, set it equal to a blank array. When we cancel tasks, we're gonna say my tasks for each and we'll cancel them. And then we can also set my tasks back equal to a blank array. So now we cancel all of the tasks in this array and now we can have multiple functions in our code where we say maybe let task one and we say let task two and then we can call my tasks dot append and we can put in all of the tasks that we have in our code so that we can all can so that we can cancel them all together so again here we can manage the task at the task level let me actually put this one back of some task equals this. And let's make one more of task seven where we do this, or we can even do a task dot detached. So we can run it detached from any actor that we may be in. And so here we purposely do not cancel tasks to keep strong references. So these are basically our options here. I wanted to just touch on this because it was definitely confusing to me when I was learning some of this stuff. I think it's probably confused to some other people as well. This came up a bunch of times in our Discord. So again, we do have strong references and we can make weak references, but the reason that we are not is because we are managing the tasks instead. So we can hold a reference to the task and then we can cancel those tasks if we really want to get rid of those references Otherwise, we can purposely not cancel them. All right, a little confusing. This is pretty intense stuff though. I hope it did help some of you guys out. Last and final thing that I wanna just point out, way earlier in this playlist, I showed you guys how to use the task modifier. So we used the task here. 
And I purposely tried to show there that when we use this task modifier, even in the documentation, it automatically, it tells us that it automatically cancels when the view disappears. So if we are using this task modifier, and I'll put one on this view here, so we can say view model dots, um, how would we do this? We would create another function here. We could create another function here. That's like update data. What are we at? Eight. Update data eight. And we would just make this asynchronous. And now we can call update data eight. Okay. So this task is managed by the Swift UI view. So this task will automatically cancel, which is why we don't have to hold a reference to the task in here. So if you want those tasks to cancel and you can call them from the view, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But if you're using MVVM and you're doing a lot of your tasks from inside your view model, you probably want to hold your own references and manage them yourself. Anyway, that's it for me. Hope this cleared some stuff up for some of you. It definitely was confusing to me. Came up a bunch of times in our Discord. And that is all I got. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.